I don't know what to say, man. There's a lot of tension in the air. There's a lot of evils that have been going on. And, uh, you know, I'm wondering how much Lucifer has infested the major echelons of our societies. Because you look at the fruits of these kingdoms and you see that you've got the subjects that have all turned to Marxism in order to blind their own eyes to the criminality of the mass immigrants that have come amongst us. And you see that our own people are allowing it and are denying the plain facts that people are three, four, five times more criminal in a violent and murderous way although often towards their own people, but even so, majorly overrepresented in violence and murder. And nobody wants to see it. They just want to call it oppression or discrimination if you even mention it. And this means that everybody is becoming too introverted. Everything is becoming too introverted. Everybody is being shut down and shut up. And it means that we've not got a voice anymore. We've forfeited the right to a voice in the name of other people's safety as if an immune system was not related to morale as if the economy was not related to morale and so we've become emotionally dissociated in a climate that was already very ripe with fertilizer for not being in touch with reality for so many reasons we've not been in touch with reality for 20 years Nobody's even got a full clue what happened on September the 11th, 2001. And it's been the basis of almost everything that's happened to us since. You know, we've had the, the downturn in 2008 that was supposedly caused by greed. It was caused by the usury system itself, inventing money out of nowhere. And it, it's a selection pressure for venality in people. And so when there are downturns, we pay the price for it because the government bails out banks and bails out all sorts of things using our money. It borrows money to keep afloat the fictional financial centres of our lives. None of it makes an ounce of sense. And you have to wonder if it's not the case that all these echelons, as I say, are infiltrated by Lucifer, even in a most emphatic way. They might be hearing at the top level the voice of Lucifer, because I certainly have, with a clear mind. So, we're up against it. We're up against people who are... I mean, thank God that Lucifer is, is under the ultimate control of God. Because if it was men that we were up against, then we wouldn't be able to look to their redemption. It's very easy just to join the latest faction, get the latest idea of whose blood we need to start picking up the trail of, and go for. You know, we've got to recognise that we're up against spiritual forces which aggregate certain movements that are based on our own laziness. But it's very easy to be lazy when there's no philosophical basis to an entire country or when the philosophical basis to it is insane. And that's what we've got. We've no basis in anything at all. All the spirituality is corrupted by Indian heathenism all the deism is corrupted by Abrahamic arguments. Uh, you know, our food supply is being tampered with. According to economics, you've got businesses coming and going every day. And um, psychiatry is a mess. and has been for a very long time, since it divorced itself from religion, basically. Um, psychology, a mess. A complete disconnect between mind and body as the basis of theories about how to be healthy and how people get sick and how to treat them. We've got mass murder going on all the time with uh, euthanasia, they call it palliative care, they're easing you on your way. They actually just kill you with morphine. There's no way of knowing if you're on your way or not. If death is a failure of the systems of the body, we might think that people could go on a lot longer than what they do. Than what they do being hooked up to machines in hospitals. With harried down nurses. Nasty people. Run off their feet. We've had artificial wars for a long time and then the guy that overturned that. 
you know, a bit satanic, but he overturned all that. Now we're all embroiled in weakness in the face of China and all sorts of subterfuges regarding where does the virus come from and where do we go from here. It makes no sense. And that's why I think there's a great interjection going on, which is to say the libido has stopped looking outwards because it doesn't feel stable in doing so. And so you get people turning into their own personal mystery. You know, and it becomes an argument between gender within or an argument between factions within that ordinarily was managed through an, a reasonable amount of socialness in society, in former days. Everything is becoming closed down, shut down. And when that personal contradiction is the wellspring of movements now, it's all emotional. And none of it is reason or rationality. There's no basis to the arguments. It's just if you don't agree, you're violent. And that's it. So when all these forces are saying, if you don't agree, you're violent. If you don't agree to the vaccine, you're violent. If you don't agree to, uh, you know, the third gender's toilets, you're violent. If you don't agree to being taught about homosexuality when you're a kid, you're violent. If you don't agree to whatever it is, um, it's all an argument of, of factionalism. If you don't agree to mass immigration, you're violent. If you say that people who are statistically extremely more violent and murderous are statistically extremely more violent and murderous, you're violent. If you say, well, everybody else has got legacies and other people have been slaves and they were not like these people, you're violent. You know, if you say people were kept, Asians were kept in camps, East Asians were kept in camps, they didn't come out and, and be mass murderers. Why is it that the slave, who was sold by Africans, has to become a mass murderer on propensity to such a high degree? You know, why the sadism? Why the constant sense of entitlement when every avenue has been opened for them? When the discrimination is the other way? What's, the in what's enough? You know, if you question that, you're violent. So when all the forces in our nations are saying, if you don't agree with my dimly thought through emotional interjection, that is to say, absence of willingness to communicate with other people, and a kind of a contradiction that's within my own energies that I can't reconcile because the society is a mess and I don't trust it, so I'm going to be factional from that basis, rather than the real position, which would be to not be factional from that basis, or to be wider, to be more open-minded, to be more clear thinking. When people say, if you don't agree with my personal position, you're violent. And there's all these different factions, where does it end? When other countries can just lock things down and put out propaganda, and they're relatively stable, or they seem to be, or they're thought to be, or they're afraid of. The citizens are afraid of that government. You know? Do you not get the West trying to be that? Trying to be authoritarian? And trying to use vaccine and things by the back door? They might be preparing us for to all get in radiation suits, get sprayed down, you know, so that we do not have the chips against us in braggadocio displays of nuclear war posturing. You know, if they're all ready and we're not, then we can all get ready by having the infrastructure or the idea infrastructure. The infrastructure of emotions to be able to counter these things. What for saber wrestling? There's nothing to trust anymore. It's no wonder the libido gets interjected because there's nothing to trust anymore. You know, people think spirituality is drugs. Mess with the biology. People think psychiatry is drugs. Mess with the biology. People think religion is drugs. Mess with, mess with the biology. People think culture is every kind of vain adornment without any skeleton that muscle. People think that restlessness and imitation of people who are violent and restless and get record deals for being satanic is culture. It's only because of Christian sentiment we didn't come off the rails in the 90s or the 80s or the 70s. But the Nordies were bad and the Thames were bad. 
And this is getting bad as well. I don't know where it ends, because all I see is our government playing second fiddle to communist China. And when I say our government, I include Russia as well. I'm tired of the posturing, I'm tired of the aggression. I'm tired of people funding people like China and then claiming they're the enemy tomorrow. What are they playing at? What are they in the grip of? And that's why I say I think they're all controlled by Lucifer. But Lucifer's hold is weakened by our righteousness. It's all, it's just Everything begins with our righteousness. You think, am I in hell because it just seems nobody else is righteous? They don't go to church or whatever. You say that's righteous. It might be. Have a family. All smiles. That's righteous. But it's not politics. It's not culture. It's not the dialogue of the day. This is the question of who's leading us and what they think. And what's going on in their minds. And how much they're disconnected from us because of vermiculated law. The complexity in law that's selected for by the usury system. You pull usury out, you pull it all out. But they don't trust enough to do that. To make stable measures. So everything is twisted. Because it's beginning reconstituted. It's reconstituted milk. It's bleached bread that you add the vitamins back into. You know, it's cereal with synthetic, synthetic vitamins in. Everything is a reconstitution based on the denial of the fact that we could stop stripping the nature out of everything. And I think the end result of that is really bad. If you think you get more control through the chaos that that engenders, no you don't. There comes a point where things come together and where your Piscean age meets square in the face of the Aquarian necessities. And the Aquarian features that people are living in a blind way. As it says, Aquarius inflames the uh, forces of Lucifer in the old Sibylline text. Who knows what was meant by Lucifer then, but we can certainly read it as Satan, the devil, is awakened by a cheap version of the Aquarian. And that's what we've all got. We've got this introjection, this my world, me, what I need, what I've been missing, without any connection philosophically to anything else outside. There's no philosophical, philosoph love, truth, there's none of that. What there is, is factionalism, born from that Aquarian basis. You can't run your governments on this stuff. So you're imitating China's Chinese communism. You're imitating a dictatorship. You're trying, I don't know, to fill back in the books. You're trying to reconstitute power. Not necessarily over our people. It could just be so that we can defend against threats. But you're trying to get everything in the least natural way. Rather than saying, well, look, economics is basically fiction. There's ways we can do this that's proper and stable. And maybe that's what the Great Reset was all about. But everybody went crazy thinking it was Illuminati. Because you get certain satanic-minded people like Paul Joseph Watson that just think that everything is to be called out without any discretion. And this is the purity that we've got. We've got childish people calling out childishness. And that's, that's our media, that's our truth. It's, um, it's eye-watering. If you think anybody that's in intelligence that's got to look at this situation and think, well, where do I begin? Because... The people are using immigrants like mercenaries against their own governments. And the governments are using the immigrants like mercenaries against their own people. And it's just a free-for-all for the immigrant. But he's not really valued in many cases. He's a token immigrant. 